just uh, you know, casually placed in the background here. Um, this is just one that we have for the registration area. Okay. And uh, yeah, just a nice reminder of all the printed materials that you need for proper mm -hmm. registration and, and to host an event. In totally. general, so we'll close the door because the birds here. You're not okay. recording, are you? Are you recording? Of course I am. Oh I can man, what the heck? Come on. I was I was gonna do like something like this. Oh Patrick. Good job. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I insist that you do that the entire time you're riding the Grand Fondo. Yeah, remember. yeah. You know me. I, I like to I like to do weird stuff and just keep people on their toes. You know, I was mm -hmm. kind of thinking like um, this year for Alpine Loop Grand Fondo, mm -hmm. maybe maybe having like you know, some beef jerky um, mm -hmm. you know, on my backpack and sort of a self help you know aid station where you can like oh. up snacks oh maybe like some gummy bears gum, little baggies of gummy bears or something like that i love um, wow, i like this just like rip it <laughs> off take one like those signs <laughs> at my coffee shop just take one if you need one just tear it off exactly exactly mm. well it's wow. all about fun you know i think and, and that's one of the things that really um is super cool about this event that makes it yeah. slightly different uh from a race you know you kind of look at a lot of the events that we do out mm -hmm. there we've got um just so many uh sort of hyper serious events that we can choose from right. uh to be involved with and then you also have the ones that are just plain old or ripping good time yes. uh, and, and if you finish, you win, you know, really. And that's the way I think of this one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, I've never been one for like, you know, finishers, medals, right. uh, at events, mm -hmm. unless it takes a gargantuan effort to get okay. there. All right. You know, if you finish an Ironman, all right. Yeah, you okay. definitely, definitely have done some serious work and right. you've survived overtraining, injuries, illness, mm -hmm. uh, and you've done the work. You know, you've done the work. There's a reward. And this one in particular is very much like that. Mm -hmm. Here's a piece of the, the heavy metal. Oh, so we that. spare no expenses on our uh, metals, but then we also have these Swiss Glockenbells. Let's see if I have one of those. Well, yeah, tell me, like, I saw that on the website, and I was like, I do here. not know what I'm what I'm getting. Yeah, so the Swiss Glockenbells. I'm trying to think if I have one of them over here. If excuse me, I am. No, no, this is this is awesome. Into my wife's office area here. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've done a ton of racing in Europe and in the Alps in particular. And um, one of the things that's really, really noticeable is if you're riding in the mountains in the countryside in the high Alps. Um, they keep track of the cows. Okay. Or these little guys. Oh, okay. So uh, some of them have actually quite big bells, but it's a it's sort of a sense of pride, um, you know, yeah. to really do things nice there. And so each sort of family will have their own style bells. These bells will be used for generations. Wow. And. Um, it's something very iconic about the the Alps and and the mountains and you know the people that that have lived in the Alps for years and years mm -hmm. have grown very hardy, sure, very resilient, and okay. the mountains have made them tougher and mm -hmm. uh, you know I, I think I'm more appreciative of of uh, of life in in some ways and there's something. Um, you know very much about that that I saw in the Alpine Loop. And you know the picture that you have in the background is Foltz Gap. It's the steepest pitch. That is about a twenty percent pitch, ramping straight up out of the valley uh, on gravel. Very difficult. A lot of people will have to walk sections of it. Okay. And it's um, but it's the kind of thing that makes you better. You know, we do tough mm -hmm. things to make us better, to um, to get us through, and to give us goals. And once we have purpose, once we have those things we set out to do, right. it just it just really lifts our spirits. You know, it gives us something exciting, mm. gets us a little bit of that race nerves, um, right. gives us a chance to test ourselves, get us a chance to see if we can step up or right. not. Um, and I think that's one of the things. That's why I think it's so important to host this event and to, to uh, 
be back on this year. Yeah. Despite the hurdles, but despite the difficulties of, of hosting an event um, and, you know, we're survivors, you know, we're all out there pushing. We're trying to um, persevere and man, it's just really nice to have something at the end of the season like this to look forward to, totally. you know, what? because yeah, some things are going to be uh, more challenging than others. I think this year has been certainly a huge challenge uh, for all of us. And I think when we have, um, yeah, something to look forward to, it just mm -hmm. keeps us going and, oh. and training and in life. Totally. Yeah. I was asking, I was riding on Zwift this morning and I was like, all right, who's going, who's in? Um, and I had four people on the ride who were doing it, uh, but there were a bunch of folks who did it before, you know, and they were like, there's this one section. I'm guessing this is probably that section mm -hmm. uh, where they were like, that was brutal, but I totally agree with you. So, you know, uh, tell us, first of all, you kind of hinted a little bit and we've seen some of the props in the background there, like the logistics for this, even in a year like this, super challenging, right. To just kind of wrangle mm -hmm. people together and, and make it happen. Yeah. Uh, so I know it's going to be slightly different than what you've done before, but like you said, mm -hmm. me on a phone. I think it's just getting back to the core of of what these events are about, which is you know gathering, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, testing your limits, just having an awesome day. Like yep. you know, look back on that and be like, for me at least, it's going to be looking back on twenty twenty one and being like, that wasn't a bad year. Yeah, like, I got an epic ride in. You know, everything. exactly. I think it's a it's a it's kind of you know one of those things where it's a great way to flip off those challenges, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. say, you know what, you didn't beat me. Yeah. And I'm still here. I'm still doing my thing. I'm still training, still riding strong. Mm -hmm. And I'm back out here with my friends. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. A lot of people don't understand or know the story of the Alpine Loop and how it started. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was more of a challenge. You know, we were, we were sort of putting together some really tough training routes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I remember a friend of mine, Jeff Shock, he's like, what's your toughest you know, training route that you actually, you know, will do regularly. Uh -huh. And I was like, well, I mean, for mountain bike or road. And he was like, well, no, for like, you know, road, you know, like fitness training. And I said, the Alpine loop for sure. That's, that's the toughest one. You know, uh -huh. I've got several big training routes. I do uh, mm -hmm. big bear loop. Um, I do some uh, really gnarly uh, climbing on mass nothing. also do um, a no quiche loop. It, it was one of like the, the best, Mm -hmm. local training routes, like the go-to go -to route. But this one I thought was really special uh, because it goes up into these high meadows up above um, uh, the town of Franklin in West Virginia, and it's just out there. Yeah. And it's also one of those things where you really have to commit because there's no shortcut to get back into West Virginia. I noticed this. I was looking at the map just today. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, uh, I remember I had a friend of mine. He was like, you know, uh, I took him out on the route because, mm -hmm. hey, you know, that's how it started. It was this route. Hey, right. I'll show you this route. The route was really going to kick you in the butt. Um, and I took a couple people out on it. And, and one time, you know, I remember distinctly mm -hmm. taking a rider, you know, that was kind of like on the offense about it. But I was like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll, take you out there and we'll, we'll do most of the route. We'll do the Shenandoah mountain challenge. Okay. All right. And they're like, well, yeah, I'm really tired. I'm starting to cramp. You know, where, where's the shortcut? How can you ride around the mountain? Mm -hmm. And I chuckled and I said, well, you're going to have to ride down this way about 250 miles and then take a left. And that's how you get around the mountain. <laughs> so it's, it's basically a ridge line, and which okay. means the border between Virginia and West Virginia. And I think that's one of the neat things about the route is it's, it's got this natural geographical barrier. It's like this, uh, mm -hmm. it's like the, you know, a lot of the borders in the world are, are defined by mountains or rivers. Mm -hmm. And this one in particular is by this big ass mountain. You know, it's a really tough category two climb. And yeah, the only way back is to get up and over this huge pass. So really, really cool. Um, yeah, and, that, and that's really how it all started. It all started with this big challenging route. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, you know, I got to do this. You know, last big ride. Fall is a big riding season for me where I do big adventure rides, you know, not thinking about racing so much. And for the larger part of my 20-plus years of racing at a professional level, you know, I wanted to celebrate. You know, I've been traveling all over. Um, and me and the boys would just get together and go and do this big ride. And that was honestly how it started. Just 
you know, myself, some local writers like Jonathan uh, Martinez, um, Andrew McKeegan, mm -hmm. uh, Nick Waite, Joe Dombrowski, Keck Baker, um, Ben King. Um, yeah, and we would just go out and we'd do this big route and we'd stop in Franklin at the gas station, all right. exhausted and salty and tired right. and and uh you know eat, eat oatmeal cream pies and pecan <laughs> pies and drink a liter of soda right struggle bus our way back up the last climb and race up the last climb mm -hmm. and, and it's very much organic much like we would do rides you know we're not racing the whole time but you know right. sometimes we might go for our strava segment or race each other up the climb and then you know laugh and high five and mm -hmm. you know uh yuck it up and uh you know that that was really how it all started right. and um I remember uh, there was an article on Blue Ridge Outdoors mm -hmm. and it said, you know, what's Jeremiah Bishop's favorite training route? And, mm -hmm. and would you invite people to go and do it? And I was like, well, yeah, sure. You know, I put the route up there. I put the link up there. And then I remember replying to the article on Facebook. Hey, has anybody gone out and done the route? Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, crickets. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people were kind of afraid to get out there and do it. Right. And uh, it was kind of funny, but. I mean, I was like, man, you got to get out there. It is magical out there. So right. beautiful, so remote. And it's one of the few places on the East Coast with less population than in the 1890s. Right. So <laughs> you look at this uh, county, Pendleton County, mm -hmm. uh, in West Virginia, it's actually reducing population. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're in an area like Charlotte, Baltimore, D.C., mm -hmm. Uh, Philadelphia, these places are just have increasing population, more people than ever on their cell phones. You right. know, it's, it's, it's a pretty dangerous environment to ride in. Mm -hmm. But here you've got a place where, well, there's no cell phone reception for one. <laughs> and, you know, less people than ever. So yeah. more times than not, you get friendly waves from people who see you out there riding your bike. And it's, mm -hmm. it's really a throwback uh, in a lot of ways to, to simpler life. And I think that's yeah. what's really neat. You know, you get away from the bustling town of Harrisonburg, college town, you mm -hmm. get into West Virginia and it's just beautiful mountains, mm -hmm. um, animals and, and flowers and uh, mm -hmm. you know, horses and buggies. We always see a bunch of, bunch of horses and buggies on the way back. And uh -huh. it's just super cool. It's very, very unique among events in the middle. It's Mid 12 o'clock. And it's 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know Excellent. yeah yeah well my, my phone sets those little reminders but um yeah it's, it's super cool you know we really have a, a special mm -hmm. event going and i think it's one of those things where you know the ability to share it was was really what created it as an event and we had um a friend of mine uh bob hess who runs prostate cancer awareness project all right and he was looking for um a a fundraiser ride Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was like, hey, you know, I, I could use a fundraiser ride. Do you think we should do this? Do you think we should do this valley ride? And I was like, mm, I don't know. You know, it's not really organic for me to just make up a ride. Right. And then I remembered this Blue Ridge Outdoors article and mm -hmm. the invite for people to go do the Alpine Loop Grand Fondo. All right. And, um, yeah, it, it's just pretty cool. It's pretty right. cool. Uh, we had an opportunity to share the event. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's how it goes. Look at that. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, now I know the event's not just this big epic route as well, right? You've got a couple of different options. So folks who are like, I want to go out and I want to do some adventure. Totally. Hmm, maybe don't have all the legs. Exactly. And, and so for, you know, our area, we, we really just like to showcase riding of all, um, all types. And I think when we look at, you know, how we put the route together, we wanted to of course have, chances for people to experience as much as they want to. Um, and so we've got a 30 mile route, we've got a 75 mile route and we have a hundred mile pave route. And then if you want to do the gravel, you want to do the tougher sections of the course There's a 110 mile route with, uh -huh. you know, all the teeth, all the, all the, uh, the pomp and, and all the difficulty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So wow. we've had awesome. some, we've had some really good riders, including uh, this guy. We got Joe Dombrowski texting me right now. Um, he was signed yeah, up. Super, super cool. So yeah. we got the winner of stage of the uh, Giro d'Italia. How's it going back there? He's still racing till October. And after that, he may need to stay for end of season camp. But we've got riders like Joe um, mm -hmm. just texting me right here. Mm -hmm. Sorry for an interruption. Um, 
but yeah, he raced for UAE Emirates mm -hmm. done the Grand Fondo and really, um, you know, doing tough rides like the springboards, uh, mm -hmm. not just my career, but a lot of other riders careers. You, you look at Eddie Anderson, multi-time rider, we have got mm -hmm. U S national hill climb champion, Ben Wright as a many time Fondo rider, mm -hmm. uh, Pro female rider Andrea Dvorak. We've got, uh, of course, Ben King, two time winner of the Vuelta a España, has done it many times. Um, trying to get Ted King to come down and do it. He hasn't done it yet, but mm. um, I've been up for his ride. So I'm going to, I'm going to okay. see if he wants to come down this year. Yeah. Okay. And make a little road trip of it. But, uh, oh, no. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's it's just going on. Come on. I mean, what else is uh, happening? Well, you know, he's, he's uh, winding his season down. He's been doing a bunch of gravel events, and uh, yeah. I think he's got a couple more. But, um, mm. yeah, it's been really fun, uh, fun way to sort of wrap up the season. And, yeah. and it's really neat, you know, you get people from, um, yeah, well into the past sort of coming back out and, and getting together, you know, for a big yeah. wrap. So well, pretty fun. I think you're – I mean, to your point earlier, you made about sort of like the professionalization of the space, right? So – that's one of the biggest, you know, things that I think really people don't realize it until it's too late that all of a sudden they're they're doing these races. But, you know, they finished in six hours and 47 minutes and they're disappointed because they didn't go sub 630. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, they're having this sort of I mean, we all have sort of that pressure we put on ourselves, mm -hmm. but it's awesome to have an event that kind of just is like, like, just get out. You can't possibly be prepared for the nature like I don't have a 20 degree, 20 percent grade gravel climb near my house anywhere like it's just it's going to be about getting out there and just you know suffering um yeah you know you mentioned one thing earlier i thought that was really uh really intuitive which was sort of like just suffering right like getting really down in and i think people show up all manner of bikes fitness gear like you know at the beginning we all look like semi pros or maybe pro pros like yourself yeah. But when you're climbing that hill, everybody is, it's like you, the pedals, the handlebars, right? It's yep. like, it doesn't matter what you're on. Like, you got to get that thing over the top. Like, that's, that's why I ride. I'm like, that's the, the crux of it right there. So it's yeah, like yeah. multiple chances on this Alpine loop to experience that moment with myself. Yep. Yeah, we have the time sections too. And don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. It's, it's quite competitive. You know, we have yeah. our age grapes, age grade um, awards and polka dot jerseys. Uh, for the winner of each of the the age groups, and we use USA Cycling age group. So there's actually you know, quite a lot of opportunities to compete. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, we we all just go hard, but it's also like, hey, you know, either you have or you don't. And I remember sometimes I go and I'm like riding really strong, mm -hmm. and I'm able to be in the mix, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that's, that's awesome. But and then sometimes I'm just tired, and somebody else's chance to shine and uh, you know, I think it's super fun to have the sort of liaison sections um, or non-time sections. Mm -hmm. The Tour de France used to actually have sections like this where you have a time section and you have a just get to the next stage. Um, really? Yeah. So there's, there's, there's actually some some origin story to it. Um, and we also have the Lantern Rouge Award, which is the Red Lantern. So there's... Uh, you know, of course, the story of the last rider in the Tour de France who's supposed right. to carry the Red Lantern mm -hmm. so that they know not to look for everyone. All right. And that's how this award came about. Okay. And, you know, it's uh, one of those things, you know. Um, and for the riders that finish in under 10 hours, you know, we have the, the Swiss bell. So that is a difficult mark, by the way. Um, if you look at the difficulty of the route, mm -hmm. how steep it is, the flats that you can encounter, the drop mm -hmm. chains, the you know um, various challenges you're going to run into. It's it's quite it's quite a monster. The the Alpine Loop itself, mm -hmm. um, you know. And, and I like to encourage people, you know, if they first come to the event, sign up for the 75 mile ride, check it out, have fun, mm -hmm. work your way up to the 110 mile route, as right. it is. It is definitely a very challenging, very challenging route. It kind of sneaks up on you. Mm -hmm. um, but if you like adventure, mm -hmm. you like going out for a big test, uh -huh. um, you enjoy, you know, the social aspects of it, right. then uh, I, I think it's awesome. I think it's really, it's really a very different style um, event. And, and I think it's really neat because, you know, the pro riders get to mingle um, mm -hmm. with the amateur riders, the age grade, age grade riders are, are mingling with different, 
you know, riders they normally don't get to ride with. Mm -hmm. And I think what's fun about this is unlike, you know, BWR Asheville, you just go and then you don't even look back. No. Like pretty much the first hill, you're just like trying to hang on to, you know, the riders in front of you and you're just focused the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then you finish and then you, you kind of collapse. Um, but this is different because you roll out and it's neutral. Mm -hmm. And so you're socializing, you know, you're talking with the other riders, you know, it's really very, uh, very fun and encouraging. Mm -hmm. And then it will rip on the first climb. Mm -hmm. And then I'll stop at the first aid station and hang out and thank the volunteers. I stop at all the aid stations. And so mm -hmm. undoubtedly there's about 50 people that ride in front of us. Mm -hmm. I'll never see them again. Like they'll mm -hmm. finish 30 minutes to 40 minutes ahead of us, maybe oh. even an hour ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Um, the riders in the, in the, uh, in a group I usually like, you know, end up in, it's kind of mm -hmm. like a, uh, go fast, go slow group. I don't know. Um, and it's cool, you know, because we had this, uh, you know, really fun ride and then, you know, you'll rip and you'll catch up to another group of riders on the next KOM. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but it's fun cause you're, you're kind of mixing up, you know, uh, the different groups and, and it's right. super fun and, and you get to stop at the aid stations and hang out. It doesn't count against your time. Awesome. We just have fun, you know. Uh, yeah. We even had. Uh, I remember one one of the funniest stories was uh, Ben King. He found a football at the Franklin Aid Station because it's like in this park. Oh yeah. And he's like, Bishop, go along. And I'm like, what? And he he throws a football. You know, we start passing the football back and forth. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you know, it was just really really funny. People were like laughing. You know, right. like what is this? Right. You get extra time bonus for catching a football. And, yeah, uh, totally. You know, it was just, it was just fun. It was, a, it was the kind of stuff you typically, uh, don't get, you know, we actually created a Fondo, uh, drink on the fly. Um, so oh. in Franklin, okay. yeah, we, we've got an espresso, um, station in, at the Franklin aid station. Typically I love this event already. Okay. It's <laughs> awesome. yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you typically don't have a chance to grab a macchiato mid mid race, but no. um, you know, you take five, chill out, grab a croissant and Nutella, you know, some of the traditional European treats uh -huh. uh, of, of growing to love. And then um, yeah, there was the Fondo fizz, which was this experimental drink okay. that David Frazier uh, the right. Fraser Quarry, um, right. they run the aid station and mm -hmm. uh, been longtime sponsors of us. They also own a coffee uh, company here at Harrisonburg, okay. Chestnut Ridge Coffee Roasters. And um, Pellegrino, uh, you know, is, is one of our uh, classic drinks that we have, the orange Pellegrino, lemon Pellegrinos. Um, we like to do it a little different. Sure. We've got, you know, uh, normal options, PBJ and whatnot, but mm -hmm. we'd like to have some of the, the European flair. That would be known for, um, but they would take the orange Pellegrino and oh. then put a shot of espresso in it. Oh, yeah, I know you're thinking, as this sounds gross, dude. Um, but it's actually pretty good. Have you ever oh. had like those, uh, you know, dark chocolate covered, like or dark chocolates with orange liqueur in them? Yeah, 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 yeah. that's it. That's what it tastes like wow, it tastes like really dark chocolate with orange. Okay, liqueur. I, I'm not kidding, it was really good. Is there um, an age group award for? consuming as many of those at a time. <laughs> <laughs> it may be up for no that. <laughs> no but there were people doing shots of maple syrup i've seen all kinds of really weird stuff going on i'm out sure there. i'm sure Good there guy. was this one time we were uh uh going at the same time as the treasure mountain festival which is like this uh pioneer frontier right. festival in in, in franklin mm -hmm. um you know people were going around with coonskin caps on and like uh I don't know. Um, but anyway, they had this like uh, this. Uh, what is it called? Not shepherd's pie. What is it called with the squirrels in it? Oh, I do not know that pie. But I know it's your like. It's not shepherd's pie. It's like squirrel squirrel pie. I'm going to look this up on Google. Are you going to look it up for me? I will. Yeah. Yeah. Squirrel pie. Anyway, so. Squirrel Supposedly, pie. while they were setting up the aid station, the guys had an opportunity to try this squirrel. It's like a shepherd's pie with squirrel in it. Yeah. He said it was pretty good. Um, anyway, so among the other strange things um, wow. that we've seen out there, it's pretty fun. Unbelievable. This and is then a, uh, this is insane. Yeah. yeah, there's always something random. You know, we'll have something different. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, kind of every year there's always some highlight or, or some really fun uh, story. You know, one year we had um, a rider had his chain break and nobody had chain tool with them. And so we pushed the rider like five miles to get to the aid station. Mm-hmm. And then there's a mechanic at the aid station at Briar Branch. Okay. Got them going together. So we got all like three of us pushing, you know, mm-hmm this this uh rider to get to the aid station and um yeah it was just you know really fun stories like that and awesome. you know, there's always going to be um always going to be something crazy i remember one year uh there was a, a young rider uh, mm-hmm. and typically uh yeah we have a rule that you know because of the difficulty right, right, right. no um, cell phone reception out there that junior athletes aren't allowed to compete in the alpine loop Grand Fondo, unless they're accompanied by a older, uh, you know, a parent or guardian. Okay. So um, somebody had snuck in uh, and I guess disregarded that. Anyway, long story short, someone crashed and they were out in the far side of the course, oh. had no idea, you know, um, how to get back. They thumbed a lift from someone that was kind of working in the aid station, um, but they hid their bike in the woods because it didn't have room in the car to okay. look back. So we're at the finish line. Of course, we're trying to help people out the best we can. Aaron is, you know, a saint for, for putting up with all the stuff that she has to go through to, to run this thing. Uh, and she's like on the radio talking to, um, you know, the person that's running the aid station and they're like, all right, so where did you leave the bike? Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, it was next to a, a Bud Light can. And if anybody knows what it's like out there in West Virginia, Mm-hmm. There's quite a few Bud Light cans, um, and there's a lot of trees. And he said it's like next to the Bud Light can, next to the tree. Aha! Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So that basically narrowed it down to about eighty square miles. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really crazy um, because once you get onto that climb back up into Virginia, you're in the national forest, the second oh. biggest, uh, one of the biggest national forests on the East Coast. It's about uh, between that and Jefferson National Forest, it's mm-hmm. about a million and a half acres of national forest. Wow. Uh, so there's a very, very big, daunting forest. Do not go mm-hmm. off the course or you'll get lost for a week. Um, right. But yeah, that that uh, bike was found, you know, just below a ditch, about mm-hmm. four miles from the top of the mountain. I don't know how they found it, um, but we got we got the guy's bike back. Oh, and, and, uh, you know, it's one of those. One of those really funny stories that sticks with you, you know, like next to the Bud Light can. Next to the, uh, exactly. Like, oh, <laughs> next to that, that great tip right there, next to the Bud Light can. Yeah, oh, you definitely God. had to leave a little bit better, uh, you know, better indicator. Uh, yeah. If you have to leave a bike out there. But, yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's a community effort. You know, we've got about 150 volunteers. Awesome. Um, if you're uh, interested in volunteering, mm-hmm. make sure to check out the website or the Facebook page. Um, just send a direct message to Alpine Loop Grand Fondo. My wife runs the social account. Uh, Aaron uh, will definitely link you up with some opportunities to volunteer. Mm-hmm. Uh, anybody who volunteers for a shift gets half off of registration. Uh, mm-hmm. So if you do a uh, volunteer shift and it helps us out, helps you out. It's also um, just right. a cool thing to do. Be a part of the community. And, and we've got a lot of volunteers that come back year after year. And, uh, yeah, it's just great to, you know, get this thing uh, rocking and rolling again. And um, so lucky that we we have such a, a awesome, loyal crew that, that sort of just keep on coming back. But it, it's, yeah. it's also really going to be fun to have some Endurance Nation athletes come out and give it a shot for the first time. So, Patrick, would you, would you say that um, – you know, the gravel and, and sort of like this mixed terrain road stuff's becoming pretty popular for your for your clientele. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, folks are, are loving it. And I think what's great about the Alpine Loop Grand Fondo is we've got that mix, right? So it's not full gravel. You know, as you mentioned, yeah. I'm going to start with the 75. Like, I think a lot of my athletes who are, you know, Ironman athletes fairly, you know, consider themselves to be fit, fairly accomplished. <laughs> they're going off road and they're like, I just took a beating um, on my bicycle. What yeah. uh, and there's a there's a huge learning curve so people yeah. are interested and so i think events like this sort of that hybrid experience is perfect. yeah you know? i call this one uh, all road you know kind of mm-hmm. categorically you know we've been doing this for a long time uh it's the second oldest grand fondo on the east coast um but it's also one of the first gravel events 
ahead of its time in which we had, we didn't want to put, you know, a super big emphasis on how much gravel was in it, but it's always been something we really like to do here in Harrisonburg. A lot of the best roads happen to be dirt roads. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the best way to describe it is all road. It's, it's kind of like bring your Canyon and Durace. Um, You know, if you have a 28, 30 C tubeless tires running at 70 PSI, that's mm-hmm. ideal. You know, if you're running um, just some uh, accommodating tires, you'll have a great time. You want to run wide gear range uh, if you're doing the full alpine loop or any of the mountain routes. Um, if you stick to the valley, standard road bikes and standard road gearing are fine. Uh, are almost 99% paved. There's, a, I think, maybe one small connector that's gravel. Okay. Uh, but if you want to get into the gravel, uh, I think most people can, can really um, – yeah, just kind of enjoy the solitude of getting out there in the mountains, mm-hmm. uh, kind of off the pavement, off the beaten path, as it were. And you finish this this one, and um, yeah, you'll you'll really enjoy it. I think it's a blast, and uh, look forward to yeah seeing some new faces and, and right. some, some old friends too. It sounds like it's going to be total fun. How are you uh, numbers wise? I know we checked in a couple of weeks ago. How's the registration? Yeah, we're, we just get uh, registration open about three weeks ago. So we got to about 10 people signed up in the last couple of days. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think we're going to have a smaller event. There's no doubt about it. You know, with the city permitting uh, with COVID, we're very much cognizant that we want to make sure not to have a jam packed uh, right. venue um that has definitely been the case in the past um we have been a sold out event for probably seven of our 10 years all uh, right and we didn't want to bump up into that 600 800 uh people in this small mm-hmm. footprint so we've limited it i think if we have somewhere in that three to 400 range that's comfortable we can have people spaced out we're pushing into Makes the sense. grassy area to keep people uh, mm-hmm in this uh you know in this venue but also not having to be you know pushed up against other people and yeah we're just streamlining it and making it mm-hmm. keeping all the fun but actually uh streamlining it so people aren't standing in line a ton and we'll have everything in their bags so if you roll up for your registration you can pull up with your car grab your bag <laughs> got everything you need in it you know jersey okay. stocks from ridge supply you have your, um, you know, sort of swag items, number, all in there. And, yeah, it kind of, it kind of allows you, if you don't want to um, stand in line, to, to have a very mm-hmm. streamlined experience. You can, uh-huh. you know, focus on the ride. Um, and also, we will have the Beer uh, Garden Brothers Craft Brewing afterward. Um, but we're going to make sure people can spread out in the grassy area, hang out with their yeah. sort of crew, and, uh, yeah, have a good time, but also not have to – you know, be sort of stuffed into, um, you know, the pavilion where we typically stage. So like squirrels. Out a bit. Yeah. In the pie. Like- totally, totally. And, you know, I think it's um, one of those things where we're just stoked to be able to have the event. Honestly, ah. you know, we were not sure if we were going to be permitted to have mm-hmm. the event in downtown, but it's looking good. And um, yeah, I'm really excited that we're uh, being able to host a ride. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's funny because, the most fun times I've had on the ride, mm-hmm. um, you know, some of them are the time when it was like seven of us right, you know, going on the ride. Yeah. And then sometimes I, I think one of the coolest moments I had on the ride was when, okay, well, we have the huge thing and there's 600 people and rolling out of town and it's right. like a giant uh, parade, mm-hmm. you know, it's like a bike parade. You know, people are clapping. Yeah. And people are standing on the side of the road cheering us on. The Porsches are leading us out around Court Square. Mm-hmm. But then also on that same day, mm-hmm. there's a part where I'm, I'm climbing up um, South Fork Mountain. Uh-huh. And I kind of pulled away from the group I was at with. Mm-hmm. But I was also pretty far behind that league you know, group. There's probably 50 people ahead of me. Right. But I look back and I look forward and there's no one there. And I was like climbing this hill. Mm-hmm. and for that moment i felt like i was the only person out there and and everybody has that opportunity to find their place mm-hmm. on the mountain and i think that's what's really neat mm-hmm. is everyone has this experience and it's not necessarily with all the other people there 
But right. you get back to the finish and you look at the other person in the eye and you go, that was cool. And was awesome. you look at me and you go, yeah, that top of that mountain was just crazy. Mm -hmm. And you could see 360 degrees and oh. you know, the clouds were floating over. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's sort of a shared experience. Yeah. I think in a lot of ways, endurance training, endurance athletics mm -hmm. is a shared experience where you go through the stages, you do the work, you know, mm -hmm. you have that, you know, there's times where you have the self doubt and then you have the times when you have the pride and you have the accomplishment. And then at the end, you know, you, you go and you mm -hmm. just go. And, and right. sometimes it, it works great. And sometimes you flat out of the race, but all of us are in that same family of a people who get back out there and, and do it again, no matter mm -hmm. what. Absolutely. Oh man, I can't wait. I'm super pumped. All right. So we get to go alpinegrandfondo.com, right? Yep. Alpine loop grandfondo yes, Alpine loop grandfondo .com right. And check us out on bike reg. Just look up Alpine loop grandfondo and, uh, yeah, I've, I've, uh, a lot more information coming. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about the details of, uh, the event, the schedule and things like that. Mm -hmm. We've got some great sponsors on board and really excited to, um, working with all of our uh all of our sponsors so make sure to check out instagram alpine loop grand fondo and facebook uh to get the up-to-date um information and mm -hmm. yeah kind of check in there there you go okay look at that yeah, so brothers craft brewing yeah and we'll have um there's the polka dot jerseys that we'll usually do mm -hmm. uh, for age group champions um right. male and female and um yeah, so we'll have right. yep, good links to event registration. Yeah, and, awesome. and yeah, there's tons of information. So of course, by having the event for so many years, you have all the questions you could possibly have. Um, <laughs> you know, for you know everything from route to suggested gearing. Uh, so make sure if you have any questions, um, yeah, check out there. There's a suggested right. uh, gearing page, and typically, you know. It's, it's really the Alpine Loop itself, the longest, toughest route. It doesn't seem a whole lot longer than, you know, the other mm -hmm. cave route, but it's a lot tougher. Sometimes oh. it's dusty. Sometimes there's mud. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's, you know, snakes, <laughs> cows on the road. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And if you're, if you're really curious about the course, um, mm -hmm. uh Look on YouTube, look up Alpine Loop Grand Fondo, and you'll see the vegan cyclist. He came and oh, did a right, right, yeah. video. Also, mm -hmm. look at Mountain Road Ride on YouTube, and he did a course preview. We're not actually going to have the backside of Reddish, the dark side of Reddish in the route this year. So, a little disclaimer um, we thought we'd be able to get the permit, but it's going to take six plus months in order to get the permit for that. And we'll have it back for next year. Mm -hmm. um, so right now it's about 25% uh, dirt road, maybe 23% dirt road. Uh -huh. uh, so it's not not anything out of the ordinary. It's about like what we had in 2019. And most okay. people, like I said, can accommodate that on, uh, you know, 28 seat tires. All right. Sounds good. Well, everyone has the mission. They got the website. We got the, they got the anticipation of what's going to happen out there. They know where not to leave their bike, not next to the uh, Bud Light can. Don't, don't leave it next to the Bud Light can. Right. No, we've, we've got a, a great volunteer mm -hmm. uh, volunteer corps. And if you want to know more about the routes, mm -hmm. uh, you can check those out also um, mm -hmm. online. And, and you'll see the aid stations. And, yeah, we really do it up. You know, it's a, it's a tough enough ride. Mm -hmm. uh, we make sure the aid stations have all the – all the fuel and supplies you need. Fantastic. It sounds good. All right. Well, I'll stop eating immediately. So I can survive <laughs> the course. Yeah. Uh, Keep on eating. Keep on eating. Now this is uh, you know, it's about the perseverance. It's about the endurance. Right. You know, I'm super excited. I can't wait. I gotta call this afternoon and do the logistics and stuff like that. But we'll be down and uh, excellent we'll point more people here. So I'll put this up so we get it on YouTube and on the podcast as well. All right. Thanks, Anything Patrick. Else, let me know. Oh, JB, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. All right. Make sure you come right. and uh, get that medal. Look at that. Woo! I can't wait. And maybe <laughs> I'll right. even if I can get my act together. All yeah, right. Yeah, you'll you'll be there. No problem. Awesome. All right. Thanks, dude. No worries. Take care. See ya. Bye.